Imagine stepping out into a world where the air is so cold it feels like it's biting your face. The horizon is endless white. There are no trees, no vegetables, no grains. The land offers nothing green for months on end. And yet, the people here don't just survive. They thrive. Strong bodies, sharp minds, no sign of scurvy, no modern diseases that we consider inevitable. Their secret, they live entirely, yes entirely, on meat and fat. And here's the thing, modern nutrition textbooks still tell us that a diet like this is unsustainable, that without fruits, vegetables, and grains, you'll crumble into deficiency. But history and science from the Arctic tell a very different story. Let's travel back in time and up to some of the harshest climates on earth because the question isn't just can you live on meat alone? It's why have humans been able to do it for centuries without falling apart? But before we start, let's support the work of Kerry Mann and his team who's working on the Healing Humanity carnivore documentary. I'll be sure to have a link pinned in the comments. Let's start with the Inuit. For thousands of years, their lives revolved around the sea ice and tundra. Imagine the skill it takes to hunt a seal in near total darkness during the long Arctic winter. It's not just about meat, it's about every part of the animal. Seal blubber for calories and warmth. The skin for clothing. The organs rich in vitamin C vitamin A and omega-3s, eaten raw or lightly cooked to preserve their nutrients. In summer, they might catch Arctic char, salmon, or cod, drying or freezing it for later. And if you're picturing a plate of skinless chicken breast, think again. This was a high-fat, moderate-protein diet, perfectly tuned to keep them in ketosis year-round. Then crossed the Bering Strait into northeastern Siberia, home to the Chukchi people. These were master reindeer herders and sea hunters. Reindeer provided meat, fat, marrow, and even milk. Wells and Seal brought a treasure trove of fatty acids and fat-soluble vitamins. In the brief Arctic summer, they would dry or ferment meat to carry them through the brutal winter storms. Nothing was wasted. Blood was used for soups. Organs were cherished. Even the bones were boiled down for nutrient-rich broths. This wasn't survival by accident. This was survival by deep ancestral knowledge over generations. Further west, across the top of Scandinavia, lived the Sami. Reindeer, again, took center stage, not just as a source of meat, but for milk and fat. Fish from icy rivers and coastal waters added omega-3s. On rare summer days, they might gather wild berries, but these were a seasonal blip, not a dietary foundation. The rest of the year, it was dried meat, stored fat, and the marrow from long bones. Even the reindeer Deer's blood was used in cooking, providing iron and other minerals in highly bioavailable forms. Across all three cultures, there's a clear pattern. High fat, moderate protein, virtually no carbohydrate for most of the year. And they weren't just eating muscle meat. They prioritized skin, fat, marrow, and organs, nutrient powerhouses. They also ate a mix of raw and lightly cooked foods, which preserved heat-sensitive vitamins like vitamin C. Now, Here's where a lot of people get tripped up. There's this thing called rabbit starvation. It's what happens when you eat only lean meat, like rabbit without enough fat. Your body can't process that much protein without the right amount of fat to go with it. The result, nausea, diarrhea, fatigue, and in extreme cases, death. The Arctic peoples understood this intuitively. You didn't just eat the lean parts. You paired them with blubber, marrow, or fatty cuts. If you brought home a lean animal, you made sure to eat it with stored fat from the last hunt. It wasn't optional, it was survival. And think about vitamin C. We've been taught that you can only get it from citrus fruits or leafy greens. But when your diet is free of refined carbohydrates, your body's vitamin C requirements actually drop. And meat, especially organ meats and certain cuts like skin on well or the layer just under the skin, provides enough vitamin C to keep deficiencies at bay. The Inuit didn't have orange groves and they also didn't have scurvy until processed Western foods arrived. The common thread between the Inuit, the Chukchi, and the Sami wasn't just the absence of plant food. It was a deep respect for the whole animal, the knowledge to use every edible part, and cooking methods that protected nutrients. Fermentation, 
drying and freezing were their refrigerators. Their pantries and their vitamin C preservation strategies all rolled into one. If we zoom out for a second, these diets also shared something else, stability. No blood sugar spikes from bread or sugar, no grazing all day. Meals were large, nourishing, and spaced out with plenty of time for the body to be in a fasted state. This constant low insulin environment likely played a huge role in their freedom from chronic diseases we see every day. And yet, when you read a nutrition label or or a public health pamphlet, you'd think these diets were impossible. But the Arctic shows us something important, that human nutrition isn't one size fits all. And the foods that sustain life in one environment can look radically different from what we're told is balanced today. Of course, these cultures didn't live in a modern grocery world. They didn't have seed oils, refined flour, or packaged snacks sneaking into their diets. Their meat wasn't grain-fed in feedlots. It was wild, nutrient rich and perfectly adapted to their climate. They were also exposed to extreme cold and physical activity daily, which changes how the body processes fat and maintains muscle. So the question is rather you can live on meat alone in the right way. And the Arctic shows us exactly how that's done. If we're going to take lessons from them today, we have to think about creating the balance they had. Fatty cuts over lean, organ meats for vitamins and minerals, seafood for omega-3s, and cooking methods that protect nutrients rather than destroy them. It's not about copying their lives. It's about understanding the principles that made their diets work for centuries. So yes, humans can live live and thrive on meat alone. The proof has been walking across the ice, paddling kayaks through the freezing seas, and herding reindeer for generations. The Arctic didn't just test human survival, it provided human adaptability. And in a world full of processed, nutrient-poor foods, maybe it's time we take another look at what these ancient meat-based diets can teach us about health today. So if you like learning from the past like I do, like and share this video. Share an insightful comment. Consider checking out this video here on the screen. And of course, subscribing to my channel here. Thank you for coming to my channel and I can't wait to see you in the next video.